Welcome back Livestream Church. This evening we're going to focus on some more Kingdom Principles. Enjoy part two of Paul's teaching on the parable of the sower. Hello Livestream Church. This is the second part of a series on the parable of the sower. So as we looked at last time, that we found that the parable of the sower was one of the most important parables in the Bible. And the parable, as we looked at, was a story with a natural truth with a spiritual meaning to it. And as we saw, Jesus said, if you don't understand this one, how can you understand anything? So it is one of the most important things that we need to understand of how the kingdom of God works. So the first part that we looked at was we read the story of the parable of the sower and we looked at the first part that where Satan came and immediately stole the word. And the word, when it talked about the seed, the seed is the word of God. And it said that Satan came immediately when the word was sown, which is like an example of a seed. It was stolen from people's heart. And we were in the Gospel of Mark. And in chapter 4. So if you've got your Bibles, which we're looking again in the New King James Version, it says, and we're going from verse 16. Likewise, these are, likewise are the ones sown on stony ground. When they hear the word of God, immediately receive it with gladness. Verse 17. And they have no root in themselves, so endure only a time. Afterwards, when tribulation or persecution arrives for the word's sake, and immediately they stumble. So this is the second part that we're looking at. People who receive the word, but it's like stony ground. So they only have a bit of root in themselves. So as we were looking at, this process works not just for salvation, but everything we're believing for. So if you're believing for anything in the kingdom of God, you might be praying about your family, or you might be believing for healing, or you might be believing for financial, get out of the situation. And whatever the situation is, this principle works on every level. So it isn't just for salvation, which often this parable has been taught. And it isn't the wrong way to look at it, but it isn't the only way. And there is a lot of ways to look at it. And that's the thing we, we're going to delve more deeply into of how to interpret this parable. So stony ground and what we were saying before. So the word comes and where's the, the ground? The ground is our heart. This is where the word of God is going down to. So we have to guard a heart from be hardened from things. So stony ground, what's it saying? Our hearts can be stony, stony ground and not receive the word. So we receive it, but only for a while. And what does it say? They have no root in themselves and endure only for a time afterwards when tribulation or persecution arises what does it arise for the word's sake see this is what satan's trying to get out of you and get out of me is the word of god this is the thing that makes a difference in our lives this is the difference when we believe in anything we have to get all to the promises of god which is the word of god and we have to make it real for ourselves. So when we're looking for, say, even healing, we find the scriptures where Jesus went around doing good and healing all those that were oppressed of the enemy. And so if it, Jesus healed everyone, then that includes me. I'm everybody. I'm just the same as everybody else was then. And if Jesus is the same yesterday, today and forever, then we have to get out of the scriptures which says, Jesus took our infirmities and bore all our sickness and carried all our pain. We have put that in our heart. Now, when he's sharing that with things, I bet you need a bit of wisdom here. So if you're going round to the world and talking to him about God's healing power and how he's healed you, and you're still working through a process, that's just not wise. They might get onto you and say, you're crazy. What are you on about? God isn't going to heal you. So it takes some wisdom of where you're sharing with with people especially on any part if you're sharing about things what you believe in God for and not what you're expecting God to do you need to be wise with people in the world you know we share the truth of who Jesus is and what he can do but on, a, on certain areas you just need a bit of wisdom as well no, don't go saying things that can pe people can take the wrong way 
Um, and even with brothers and sisters, if you're saying you're believing for something, you need people of faith, people who are alongside you, you can share the truth with. And God will always bring certain people who can agree with you what you believe in, especially in the area of healing. You want people who are of faith. You don't want people coming up to you and saying, oh, well, I had that and I never got healed. I'd, be, I'd go to there and I had to get this and I had to have that. That isn't what you want. You want people who are alongside you and you can share with them again, yeah, I'm going to believe with you that you're going to come through for this. God is going to come through for you. These are the people you want praying for you as well. You don't want someone praying, Lord, help them and just hope they don't die from that. You don't need to share with them, people. You need wisdom. And that's where it, the persecution is always going to be for the weird sake. Satan is trying to get that weird out of your heart. You're, God's trying to put the weird into your heart. So you have to be open to his truth. But don't let persecution arrive for the weird's sake. And then you fall away. And I've seen so many people in my Christian walk, when they believe in God, they're going for your God, then things come along, pressures come on them, and then persecution might come to the saying they're a Christian, and people saying, call yourself a Christian, you're no, you're no different than you ever were. And they give up. But don't give up. This is what we're looking at tonight. God's saying, don't give up. So even if you blew it and you said, oh, you know, I, I made a mess that, you can always start again. You can always keep going. If you were going for God, you might be listening to this and you, you're nowhere with God. You know, you were going to church, you were going for God, you love God, but you're backslidden and you don't know, want no God. But somehow you've ended up listening to this message. You might be bored and you're thinking, you know, I'm, I'm stuck at home and you end up listening to this word. You can get back to God. You can get back to God tonight. There is, you can start now and put this word in your heart and don't let things pressure you and let, don't let Satan rob you of the truth. You can put in, you, you can get right with God right now, tonight. So verse 17, this is where for persecution's sake, arising for the word's sake, that immediately they stumble. But we don't want to be like that. Now, let, if we go to verse 18, it says, Now these are the ones sown among the thorns. They are ones who hear the word. So they heard the word, put it in the heart, and the cares of this world, deceitfulness of riches, desire for other things, enter and choke the word and become unfruitful. So all the persecution is to stop you from being fruitful. Now, when we believe in God, we're expecting answers for our prayers, answers for believing the word, and that is fruit from the word. So as we, we put the word in our heart, we expect results from that. So if you've been putting healing into your heart, at the end of it, you should get a healing harvest. Now, sometimes uh, I'm sticking with healing on this. People go, oh, yeah, I'll try this. And they go so far and then it's like, oh, you know, just doesn't seem to be working for me. What I've got, perhaps it doesn't work for this. But let me tell you, don't stop. You have to stay with the process. And if we're dealing with a natural thing, it says these seeds, you don't just plant a seed and expect it just go, boom. you know, overnight you've got a tree. Some things don't work that quick. And with healing, you might get a miraculous healing. And I've had them where I've just prayed and got an answer straight away. Other times it's been a process. The word I've been putting in my heart, putting in my heart, and eventually I get that harvest, the fruit of that, and I get the healing. And so, but what you have to do is keep working with the process. You don't quit halfway through and go, oh, this isn't working. And people I see it all the time. They dig the seed up and go, oh, that's nothing. Look at that little green thing. It no looks nothing like, which in the natural it doesn't. You see a little oak seedling when it's just sprouted its head up out of the ground. It doesn't look like an oak tree or an apple tree. You look at that pip, plant that in the ground, and it's this little green thing. You go, well, where, where are my apples? Where's the fruit of this? I've got an apple tree in the, my back garden, and every year it produces apples. I get fruit abundance of fruit but it didn't start like that it was a little green thing that popped its head out the ground never had a dug that up and gone well that, that that hasn't worked and that's what people do they quit on the process don't quit on the process and it says cares of this will things can come in pressures come in 
pressure. Satan uses pressure to make you quit on the process. Deceitful of riches. And it isn't saying, you know, I've found, met people who've got no money at all, but they've got a real problem with, with the desire for riches. And I've met people who are absolutely millionaires and they've got no problem with money. They know it's some of the most generous people I've met. So it isn't about having money or not having money. It's having a desire for money that is just for your being rich for the sake of being rich. And it says, desire for other things, enter in and choke the weird and you become unfruitful. And it becomes loads of things. It can be family pressures, it can be work pressures, time. Saint uses things to distract you and you have to make the effort to put time with God's word every single day. You can't say, oh, well, I went church here, Pastor Mark, preach on a Sunday. That's not enough. That isn't enough. On a Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, you have to make time for yourself. Put that word in your heart. Keep putting the word in your heart and then you'll see things change. You'll see yourself change, which is the most important. God wants you to change. He's changing you so you can make a difference in this world. Now, we're going to leave it here and there'll be a third part of this. But what I'm saying to you, don't quit on the process. Keep going, keep going. And we're going to look at being fruitful on the next part. Amen. Thank you for that, Paul. So, yes, let's keep our hearts soft, like the soil, if you like, so that those roots can go down deep. The roots of the word of God can go down deep so that we won't fall and we won't stumble uh, when those times of testing come. So just like us to pray, if we can, uh, Lord, help us to become people of faith and to take the promises in your word and make them our own. Help us to never give up and to stay with your process of growth in our lives. Amen. Have a blessed week, folks. See you soon.